All right, Salawam. Salawam. Salawam, Salawam. We're giving all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rachach Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father, whom the word we know is God, Jehovah and Yahweh. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, our King, Lord, and Savior, whom the word eagerly know is Jesus Christ. Ba'asham, Rachach Kodash. Is in the name of the Holy Spirit. It's the inspiration given to us to edify those that have been given the ears to hear. Double honors to the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect brethren, faithfully and diligently preaching his word with fear and trembling. Shalom to the believers that subscribe and listen to this truth wholeheartedly through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right with the GMS Memphis Camp to my left. I not. I'm the brother Tazamak coming at you through the spirit. Lord willing with another edifying lesson. All right. Uh, and we're just going to get into the topic of this year's theme coined by Apostle Ha, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right. Which is from Jeremiah 30, verse 7, which I'll start off reading here. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right. So when you look at the times we're coming upon, all the signs are pointing towards uh, the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and Jacob's trouble. Jacob being uh, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Hispanics. All right. You are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. All right. Going back to the 12 sons of Jacob, those 12 patriarchs. And everything that is going on in the world is being orchestrated by the Harbashim and Halashai. And it's ultimately to separate the Lord's elect from the rest of the world. You get uh, Amos, right? The Lord is uh, he's causing a great sifting uh, to go on in the earth, ultimately to redeem uh, his chosen people. And specifically in this time, the elect of the nation of Israel, again, being so-called Negroes, Latinos, never married Hispanics. You are the sons of God according to biblical prophecy, all right? And ultimately, this whole world revolves around uh, the Haobashim and Haobashai's judgment reaching out to you, all right, as a form of mercy, all right? He set up prophets and men to preach this, uh, what is known as the gospel, this good news. But within this good news, there's a lot of trouble, all right, to come. As this book is a, a book of lamentations, mournings, and woes, all right? And those troubles are ultimately what's going to bring uh, Jake out of this Babylonian lifestyle. It's ultimately going to separate Jake from the wickedness of this world. That's that, that's that sifting. You got it out. This is Amos 9. You want to start at 8? Uh, yeah, you can start at 8. Yep. Amos 9 to 8. It says, uh, Behold, the eyes of the Lord yet how are all upon the sinful kingdom. Yep. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Right. That sinful kingdom, it ultimately begins uh, with Jake, right? Because judgment begins with you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans which the bulk of you are where? In what land? America. So the eyes of the Lord are focused in on America, all right? And that's where the bulk of his people, uh, for the most part, as a collective, there's more Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans dwelling in America than any other land on the planet Earth, all right? Because remember, it's about your sins. It's not about... Uh, the sins of these other people. Jump to Amos 3 and 1 real quick and then jump back. Okay. It's not about these other nations. It's not about Moab, Ammon, uh, Edom. It's not about them. We're in the hands of these heathens and Edom 
being the chief of the heathen is ruling over us because we dropped the ball. We didn't hearken into the word of the Harbashim Yahweh Shah. So guess what? In order for in order to get us to listen, all right, the Lord is going to go to extreme measures to make his point about his judgment. You got it, bro. It's Amos 3 and 1. Could his word that the Lord Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities, right? So that's what Jacob's trouble is all about. Jacob's trouble is the recompense for the iniquities of the sons of Jacob. All right, that's why it's called Jacob's trouble, not Edom's trouble, not Moab's trouble, not Ammon's trouble, right? And guess what? That's why this trouble it said it's great and it, there is none like it because the Lord, <laughs> he's going to go to extreme measures to correct his people, right? You got it. You can make a point. You got it. No, I mean, this back in Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house. So I can fear yeah. Saving that would not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. See, he's not going to utterly destroy the house of Jacob. So going back to Jeremiah 37, it said what? He shall be saved out of it. Not the whole nation, though. Right? Yep. He's going to save a remnant. A small number of his people are going to receive the judgment. They're going to receive the correction. They're going to take heed to the reproof. And that's ultimately what's going to allow them to escape the indignation and the wrath of the Lord. Yep. So, so the Lord is saying, I'm not going to completely destroy all the Israelites, but I'm going to destroy <laughs> a great number of them. Exactly. A great number of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to destroy, but not all of them. Yep. Uh, Amos 99. For lo, I would command and I would seal the house of Israel among all nations. See, he's going to, he's going to sift. Look that word sift up. He's going to sift Israel from amongst all nations. In America, not only does it possess uh, the bulk of the Israelites, but this is the only nation where majority uh, of this uh, American population consists of foreign nations, you know? There's a lot of foreigners in the land of America compared to these other nations, right? That's why it's known as the great melting pot, all right? So that's why you also have uh, our people taking on the customs of these heathens as they were commanded not to do pertaining to Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, right? And they are now adopted the way of the Buddhists, all right, the way of the Hindu, you know, the way of the uh, the Muslim, all right? And uh, last but certainly not least, Christianity, right? Plantation Christianity to be exact, all right? Which is nothing but white supremacy. Now you see, uh, as <laughs> you look into society, how destroyed the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American man is. Why? Because they don't know the true judgment. They don't know their true power. And the laws are what bond the Lord's people back to him. You see, there's a contract that was made with no other people on the planet Earth. All right. The most high made with no other people on the planet Earth except for Jacob. Get Psalms 147, 19 and 20 real quick. And those laws are activated, right, by curses. All right, the curses are, are a telltale sign that shows who the Lord's people are. And everything in the curses is basically what uh, trouble is. The curses is nothing but trouble, man. You know, tribulation, affliction. You got something? No, I got this, sir. Okay. This is Psalms 147. And start, at, start at 18. Psalms 147, 18. 
He sent out his word and melted them. He sent out his word and melted them. Right? It's a milk. Yep. <laughs> the Lord told Jeremiah, what I will uh make my word in thy mouth like fire, and this people would. Okay. Go ahead. He caused his wind to blow and the waters flow. Yeah. So the law the Lord. His word is uh, always speaking of judgment. It's always speaking of judgment being executed upon Israel, okay? Either through Israel or upon Israel. That's it. Go ahead. Verse 19, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, and he had not done so with any nation, and for his judgments, they have not known them, Praise the Lord. Right. The other nations have not known the judgment of the Most High. But guess what? Our people have taken on the cultures of these other nations from generation to generation to generation until they ultimately what fell away. Thus said uh, the prophet Jeremiah 17 and 4. He said, thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy inheritance which I gave thee. So when we look at our people, all right. The state of mind that they're in, they have no heart towards the judgment of the Most High. So they have become casted out. They have become likened unto these heathens who the Lord never dealt with. And unless they repent and turn back, guess what? Heavy judgment is going to come upon them like it has never came upon any other nation. Again, the Lord either executes judgment upon Israel or through Israel. Okay? So, which side of the trouble do you want to be on? Okay? Because the, the judgment, the Lord uh, gives it to be spoken first, right? So, he say, uh, he sent his word and it melted the people. Yeah. When we're speaking, it's supposed to instill a particular fear in you. So that you will get right. So that you will come to the Lord in a contrite spirit and ask for that mercy. All right. Like I say, uh, before judgment comes. Yo, can you get that? I, yeah. I know that we jump like two precepts outside of uh, Amos, right? You can go back to Amos when you get this. Unless you have something on your spirit. If it's like 18 and 20, before judgment examine that so. In the day of visitation, that's your find mercy. Right. So examination comes in two forms. It's either self-examination, right? Which even before you can examine yourself, someone has to test you, right? Ultimately, when the Lord sends his prophets out, it's a testimony, right? The the, the first uh the prefix of a testimony is test. So we're witnessing to you the judgment of the Most High so that you can examine yourself, right, before the physical judgment comes, which is going to be first executed by Yahweh Shah. But it's being executed by word through the prophets right now, week in and week out, through every uh, uh, video or digital letter that goes out. These are tests. Yeah. You know, these are tests that's going out so that you can examine yourself. God. Read that again and you, I, you got a point. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, this is like 18 to 20. Before judgment, examine thyself in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Like the, uh, the scripture say, uh, lest you be reprobates. Yep. And we know a reprobate is someone excluded from the number of salvation, man. You're not part of the event, ultimately, man. So we gotta pretty much well examine ourselves, and it goes right back to the word uh, self. When I um, let me look that up with Chris. Uh. <clears throat> That's the word self in the New Oxford American Dictionary. It's a uh, uh, examine something thoroughly, so it is to isolate that which is most important or useful. To act or sift something, especially so as to isolate that which is most important or useful. Woo! So so that it can isolate. Yeah. That which is most important or useful, right? But we're in the time now where the harvest is ripe, man. 
This word then went throughout the whole entire earth. Everybody knows about the Hebrew Israelites. Everybody knows about uh, the judgment that the Most High uh, is coming back, right, to destroy. He's coming back. Uh, Babylon the Great is America, which is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. Man, these people know about this, man. And that's what the Lord said. Uh, the end shall come. When this word is preached throughout, when the word is preached throughout the earth, right, throughout the uttermost parts of the earth, and daily these uh, testimonies right. are going out to isolate. Read that definition again. To isolate. Yes, yeah, says Zara something through it, so it's to isolate that which is most important or useful. Right, the Lord's coming to get His Jews. Remember, uh. The scriptures say acceptable men are tried in the furnace of affliction. Another word for tried is tested. Okay? So those that are acceptable are going to go through that very same trouble that the entire nation of Israel is going to go through. But guess what? The elect of those are going to be accepted after those trials. You know? Two-thirds are going to be destroyed during those trials. They're going to fail the test. Huh. You got it, bro. I mean, yeah, that, that's it. You know, so I go back to Amos 9 and 9. Before you go there, this is 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. <clears throat> Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. And that's what it all boils down to. Right? It's all about the faith. Because uh, the Lord say, when he comes, shall he find faith on earth. All right. And he's got to put you in that position to where the only thing you can rely on is your faith in him. Trouble means you're about to get a lot of shit stripped from you. You're about to get a lot of luxuries and comforts taken away from you. Things that you think are vital for your survival is going to be stripped from you. That's what Jacob, Jacob's trouble foretells, man. Examine thyself whether thou be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. Wait, if, if you reprobate, you're not useful, man. Yep. When you look at two thugs, they are a bunch of degenerates, man. It's like Esau, you know, call his own people wasteful um, eaters. Yep. That's exactly what two thugs are, man. Yeah. When you look at a sifter, it's a, uh, it's a tool that has a bunch of holes in it. Right? Has a bunch of holes in it. And everything that's undesirable falls through the holes. And, and the hole pieces, they stay on. They're stable. They're they not going to fall. That's the stability. Faith represents the stability for you to hold on as this world is about to be shaking the fuck up. Shit's about to hit the fan on a level like it's never hit the fan before, man. Got it? Amos 99, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Yep. Well, that's it. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth, man. Give me uh, Lamentations uh, 3 and 40. Can I read 10? Yeah, you can, you can keep going. Yeah, it said, all the sinners of my people should die by the sword. We say that evil shall not overtake no prevent us, man. So the sword is twofold, you know, the Esau will come down with great wrath and often with the missiles too, man. Yep. You know, the most high uh, judgment, man, upon all the wicked Israelites, correct? You know, the in that mindset, no such thing as Jacob's trouble, nothing evil gonna happen unto us. Hey, the sword is prepared for you, man. Especially you took your hand for the plow, man. That's something the most high uh looked down upon, man. You know, so this yep. limitations three and forty. Uh, you can start at thirty. Thirty-eight. Yeah, I started. You start at thirty-seven. 37. Yep. It said, "Or uh, limitations three and thirty-seven. Who is he that said?" And it coming to pass. Yeah. Who is he that said that it coming to pass? Go ahead. 
When the Lord commanded it not. When the Lord commanded it not. Yeah. So who who gonna say something gonna happen and the Lord didn't say it was gonna happen and it happened and it happened. If, if a man say something gonna happen, if the Lord didn't say it's gonna happen, then it's not gonna happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> gonna read that with the NLT yeah, real quick. I, 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 I want to read that NLT too. Good. We we'll read that with King James. I'm gonna jump back to NLT. Okay. It say out out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded that evil and good. Yeah. So this is the NLT start of verse 37. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? Right. <laughs> Boy. Does not the Most High send both calamities and good? Does not the Most High send both calamities and good? It's Isaiah 45 and 7 linked right up with that, man. Yeah. You know? Also, Amos, uh, what's that? Should it be evil in the city? And the Lord, Lord have not, not done, done it. it. Amos 3 and 6 and yes, 7. Yep. yep. You got it, bro. Most and then it says, Surely the Lord uh, doeth nothing, but he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is not telling you nothing uh, literally himself. Right. Like the spirit was on Apostle Hart to uh coin the year uh uh the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. Well guess what? That same night I saw a brother, I can't even remember, Salaka. It was a brother that I had already uh put that spirit out there. He had entitled his video some to that fact. And then came back and said the spirit was right on point. So when he said it, I felt it because uh, even at the camp Saturday, I was, you know, talking to the brothers in my camp. I would tell them, hey, brothers went through a lot of hell this year. Get prepared to go, go through even more. Like, that's basically uh, what we got to look forward to until your house shot come. Persecution, affliction, hell, right? The Lord say evils and only evils are going to come. You got it, bro. Yeah. Verse 39, King James. It said, Wherefore do a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Right. So you, you can't complain, man. You can't complain for the hell that, uh, man, why you got, why you got to go there? Why you got to say, man, damn. You know, because a lot of people. Who don't want Jacob's trouble to come, man? You know, it's a lot of people who only want the smooth things, yeah. right? Let the scripture say, preach unto the smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Prophesy deceit. What we supposed to say? The year of Jacob's prosperity. That shit ain't. The Lord didn't command that. <laughs> right. You know, that's not coming. Pain has to come before the prosperity. Suffering has to come before the salvation. The Lord always compare the plans to what? It's a woman travail. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The woman her night went. The, um, the, the, the pain. The contraction in the pain intensifies. Yeah, it, it don't slack up. No. Nah. So this is exactly how it is, man. And, and the scripture here says what? what? Wherefore do a living man complain a man for the punishment of his sins? You say you yeah. got a question mark there. Yeah. Yeah. So we get punished for, for our iniquities, man. Even Michael said, I will build an international of the Lord. Because I had sinned against them, man. So we got to bear, we got to endure it. And I always keep in mind, the Lord will not put more on us that we, that we can't bear. You know? You guys know? Keep going. Keep going. We're going to verse 40, the point. Yeah, you know? uh, verse 40. Let us search, search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Yep, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord, man. Okay? That's that self-examination. Hey, N-O-T. Yep. Instead... Let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. That's what that's that's what you need to worry about. That's like getting your house in order, man. Right? First and foremost, your house is your body, your mind, right? And 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 what you feed your spirit is going to dictate uh how that house is kept. Right. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Keep going. It say uh for the one, let us lift up our heart with our hands unto the most high in the heaven. We have transgressed and have rebelled that has not pardoned. Yup. Right. That's it. And we're hoping for that pardon. Look at the word pardon up. 
We're looking to be pardoned, man. We're looking to be uh, the what? You know, you got to know that. We're looking for the the what? The what, yeah. Yeah, we're looking for the the what. I'm trying to put an English twist on it. We're looking for the the what, man. You know? The, 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 the spirit that the Lord is going to allow uh, brothers to embody so that they can escape judgment. You know? Yep. That mark. This is part of the action of forgiving or being forgiven for an error or offense. That's it. So pretty much, like it's saying, you know, the Hebrew word for part is salah. No, it's like salak. Salak. Like salak. Like salak. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, man. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. I want to, can I, I want to read this in the NLT, Jeremiah 37. Yeah, go ahead. It said, Jeremiah 37, in all history. Baba Kushan. Because I wanted to go back to Jeremiah 30 and start at the top. Six. So can you start at uh, Jeremiah 30 and 1 and read down? And then yeah. when you get to 5, you can kick it in the NLT. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. This is Jeremiah 30 and 1. Then the word, Jeremiah 30 and 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaking the Lord Yahweh of Israel saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, said the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Mm -hmm. yep. Go ahead. It said, and these are the words that, that the Lord uh, spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus said the Lord, verse 5, for thus said the Lord, how we, we have heard a voice of trembling. Of fear and not of peace. See, that's what that's what you're supposed to be hearing through the, from the prophets. You're supposed to be hearing a voice of trembling and fear. Yeah. So it's only right that when Apostle Har coined the year, uh, a hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, it's supposed to instill a fear in you, right? It's supposed to cause you to gird up, you know. Go ahead. Okay. It said, Jeremiah 35, For thus said the Lord Yahweh, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see what a man do to bear with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? <laughs> it's a woman. Right. You can see every man with his hands on his loins, man. You know? It's, time to, it's, it's the time for us to gird up, man. Time to put put away all the bullshit, all the folly, you know, put off the weak nature. Go ahead. It said, Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? It's a woman to veil, and all faces are turned to paleness. Because of the trouble. Right. Go ahead. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Yep. And this is the end of T starting verse 5. This is what the Lord says. I hear cries of fear. There is terror and no peace. Like Ezekiel 7, 25. Destruction comes. They shall seek peace and there shall be none. Only mm -hmm. destruction, man. In verse 6, end of T. Now, let me ask you a question. Do men give birth to babies? <laughs> in, this, in this society, they try to make that possible. But no. And, all, and everybody with that mindset, being a mo, a deceptive the Lord will destroy you, man. So do men give birth to babies? That's, of course not. They said, then why do they stand there as shame face? Is that, is that right? As shame face? Then why do they, then why do they stand there? They're like cut out. Yeah. A shin faced. A shin faced. Yeah. Look at that up quick. Or right. ashen faced. I think it's ashen faced. Like with that, because it's like uh, I want to say that's going into like a way how people look when they're afraid. Uh, it's it almost like uh, almost like a pale. This, Look, that's exactly what it means. Yeah, <laughs> extremely pale. Yeah, <laughs> that's the spirit. Color. Yeah, because <laughs> if you watch if you watch horror movies, 
you will see it's almost like the life is leaving them. They're so fucking scared that they their, their spirit is leaving, almost leaving their body. Cause like it's a saying, scared the life, you scared the life out of me. Scared yeah, because when people die, what happens? They they turn pale because their spirit leaves. Those so are, yeah. the times that's coming, it's gonna have to be a bold spirit, which is ultimately of the faith of Yahweh Bashim and Shah, that keeps you from uh losing your life, from having a heart attack. It's gonna the, the, the spirit of the most high is gonna have to be uh with them particular man in order for them to make it through this level of trouble and hell that the Lord is about to unleash upon the face of the earth. Uh, it's good to say man's hearts are going to be failing them for fear. for fear. And looking after those things that's coming upon the earth. That's, those are men going to be ashen before they before they die. They're going to have that pale look on their face. You know? Be in a state of perplexity. Yep. They know what's going on. Just like Tony Tony, they really didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you, you know? So yep. he said, then why do they stand there at shame face? Yeah, ashen face. At ashen face, a lot yep. of them. Hands pressed against their sides like a woman in label. Yeah. Oh, you know how, I like, like uh, for a man, you know how, uh, like, how you run it's so hard, you get so tired, you can't even stand up, you have to. Yeah, get that cramp in your side. And you holding your side, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying, trying to catch your breath. Yeah. Yup. But it say what? Like a woman in label. That's how the players are compared to, man. Second Acts 16 chapter all uh, coming mind as well. Mm -hmm. But it's both seven and all in all T. It said in all history, there has never been such a time of terror. So look at all the history um that that happened, the Great Depression, uh 7 AD, shit, slavery, the 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. A time uh, in all history, there has never been such a time of terror. It will be a time of trouble for my people, Israel. Yet in the end, they will be saved. In the end, they will be saved. <laughs> yep. And, and and first and foremost, the elect, you know, the first fruits. And then the, the rest of the nation of Israel are going to have to suffer that indignation and their wrath of the Lord. Until the kingdom of heaven is established on earth. And they can come back reincarnated through the loins of the first fruits, through the loins of the elect. Okay. You know? This uh Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophet that had been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Yep. yep. That's it. And we're in the great time of all those judgments, man. The Lord, uh, he's at the brink. We're at the brink of the Lord unleashing the four winds upon the earth. The angels are holding back uh, the winds of destruction. All right? But <laughs> we ain't got too much longer before the Lord going to tell them, hey, it's time to let it go. Yep. And, I, and I foresee, man, once it, like, it's like it's been building up for so long. Like, the, the, the Lord is going to uh, unleash a level of wrath upon the earth. That it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna come back to back to back in a fashion like it ain't never came before. Like it's gonna be one uh catastrophic event after another. I, I gotta get this then. You know, <laughs> because Lord about to make statements in the earth, man. That's it. Niggas, I'm standing on business. Lord about to stand on business in the earth, man. Yep. You don't know it's full of Lord, man. Yep. We need judgments come. Yep. This is uh second answer sixteen and thirty seven. Behold. The plagues draw nigh and are not, not slack. slack. And we know the mighty Lord sent us the plagues. Who are you that can drive them away? Mm -hmm. So 38, it's when a woman with child in a ninth month bringing forth a son with two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb. Which pains when the child coming forth, that slack not a moment. Mm -hmm. Even so, should not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth? And the world should mourn and sorrow should come upon them on every side. Yep. So it's not just going to happen in Babylon. The great going to happen throughout the whole world. Again, Jacob, Jacob or Jake, Israel is scattered amongst all nations. So every nation under the sun got to feel the um, plagues, the judgment, man. Yep. Especially Babylon the great, man. 
you know? And, and when you deal with the symbolism of that woman, a woman really uh, represent Israel. Mm -hmm. So judgment uh, is coming upon the earth. It's all based upon Israel, right? We're, we're the reason why <laughs> judgment is coming upon the planet <laughs> earth, man. You see? And uh, you know how like a woman, she's always uh, encouraged to eat right when she's pregnant, you know, yeah. don't drink, don't smoke, don't. It's, it's certain laws that a woman know not to do. It's certain laws that a woman, a pregnant woman knows not to break during birth because it's not for her benefit and giving birth to that child. You know, she want the baby to come out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She could die giving birth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But what we're what we're giving birth to is the judgment of the Lord, which is gonna come through who? Yahweh Shah. Okay. And see, guess what? Yahweh Shah already died. He he ain't dying no more. No, he ain't dying. He ain't dying no more. But a lot of you niggas is going to die. Lord will, we receive the mercy. Yep. Because guess what we're doing? We're keeping that law that we know when you're giving birth to a baby, right? We, we're keeping those laws. Those, those things that, you know, have to be done in order for that baby to be healthy. <laughs> but we hope we, we want your house shot to be healthy to us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Go ahead. This is uh, Ezekiel 7 and 25, starting the NLT. Terror and trembling will overcome my people. Mm. They will look for peace, but not find it. Calamity will follow calamity. Woman will follow woman. They will look in vain for a vision for the prophets. They're going to look in vain for a vision because the Lord going to, the part of the judgment is the Lord is going to close up the prophet's mouth and make their tongues clean to the top of their mouths. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is the Lord is going to cause a famine. All right, it's a not a famine of, of 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 drinking and eating, but a famine of hearing the word. That's the most important famine, man. What did the Lord say? Uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of the, of, of the mouth of the Most High. Right, because that's what that's what the true substance is. The word of the Most High. Uh, the Lord didn't need food to bring us to life. The Lord didn't use food to make us. The breath of his mouth made us. You know? Okay. So, the most important energy source that you can have is the words of the most high pressed upon your heart. You know? Pressed upon your mind at all times. That will give you the energy to, 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 to move forward. Like the scripture said, uh, Give me, real quick, give me Sirach 7 and 24. God. You know, I'm thinking about Isaiah 33 and 6. He's going to keep you uh, stable. going to keep you stable. You know? Yeah. This is Sirach 7 and 24. It says, uh, has thou daughters? It says, no, what? Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. It's a lot. Yeah, it's Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. This is Wisdom of Solomon uh, 7 and 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her purity. See? The word of the Most High is pure wisdom. And it says, for wisdom is more moving than any other motion. So the words of the Most High is going to cause you to move far more than any earthly substance can. You know? And it's going to cause you to move efficiently. Go ahead. Yeah, for she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled things fall into us. That's it. You know, and ultimately, uh, we're hoping that we remain pure in the eyes of the Lord. So that he can continue to guide us uh, with his wisdom as we approach these great times of trouble, man. God. As we enter into these great times of trouble, that we are kept uh, by that same wisdom as the brother who was quoting Isaiah 33. And six. Yep, let me continue on this. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of the Most High, and the image of his goodness. And being but one, she can do all things. The image of his goodness. Right. right? So that wisdom is ultimately the order from the Most High. 
or how to move the right way, how to move in a good in a a good fashion, a good direction. You got it, bro. It's in verse 27, and being but one, she can do all things and remain in herself. She make all things new, and in all ages, entering into holy souls, she making them friends of the Most High. In all ages, she enters into holy souls, making them friends of the Most High. See, we, we're about to go, which we in the end, right? But we're about to go almost like into another time zone with the judgment that's about to come. <laughs> like the earth is about to, man, the earth is about to go, the world's about to go into a whole, uh, like a whole nother, uh, almost as if I'm saying another age, but we know we're still in the same age, but, but the, the shit that's going to be going on is going to be like, people might not even recognize the world no more. About to, about to change. It's about to be like the twilight zone. Like shit gonna, gonna change the, the way that uh, business is conducted. You know, the way that people uh, treat each other. You know, we, we're about to have uh, class wars. You know, uh, social uh, wars, uh, political wars. Yeah, civil war, you know, it. it's, all, it's all like good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It said, uh, she make them friends of the Most High and prophets, for the Most High love and none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Yep, for the Most High love and none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. And that's what we dedicate our life to, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your heart, Hashem, Yahweh, Why? Because that's the principal thing. That's the principal thing, man. Not food, not water, not clothes, not money. Wisdom is the principal thing. This uh this definition for calamity, an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress, a disaster. So the scriptures say great misery should come upon them uh that are walking in quiet, man. Yep. And it's saying the NLT, calamity will follow calamity. So this was coming, the plan is slapping at a moment. It could be one problem out of uh, another problem, like it's saying Amos the uh five eighteen. Want to you that desire the day of the Lord for one end is uh, for you, right? You, you you escape a lion and a bear met you. You escape a bear and lay your hand on the water and something bit you. This is exactly how the judgment going to um, be, man. A, a domino effect, man. Yep. So a calamity will follow calamity. Woman will follow woman. They will look in vain for a vision from the prophets. Then we will see no teaching from the priests Woo! and no counsel from their leaders. And this, hey, also to the poor church pastors, man. They ain't gonna know what to say. They're not gonna be stopped, man. And a lot of these poor church pastors, they're gonna be put to death by their congregation, man. Huh. Yeah. Yep. This is, uh, you just quoted the second measure, 8 and 50. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Yeah, they saying in the world, pride is a motherfucker. You know? <laughs> hey, and and the scriptures keep using the uh allegory of their judgment coming as a mother in travail. Yeah, you know? Gotta be so <laughs> So you know, pride is a motherfucker, man. Yep. You know? See latter time, so the last days, right? Yep. Cause when you, when you look at Israel, we're supposed to be the nurturers of the earth, which a, a mother is, that's what a mother is, a nurturer, man. But because of our pride, <laughs> majority of us are going to get fucked over. Yep. I'm, hey, and <clears throat> you don't want the most high to fuck you up, man. Mm -hmm. He say he shall bring, uh, can you get that? The, uh, the greatest fears, uh, Man, I don't even, I know I'm roughly quoting it, but uh, basically, the scriptures foretell how, you know, it's for you jakes that think it's a light thing, you know, and you, and you through your pride, you're continuing your way because shit, we all gotta go sometime. Fuck it. Yeah, that's your mindset, your little mentality. Yeah. We all gotta die, man. You live your life. Yeah. But see, they don't understand that how you go, <laughs> that's up to the Lord. You're right. 
We all got to go. But how we go is up to the Lord. And the Lord is going to uh, determine how you go by how you move. You move with pride and you spit in the face when the Lord extends his mercy out to you. You know, like say, uh, when, when the doors of repentance are open, you despise it when you had liberty. You know, you load the law. You load the law. You understood <laughs> what, but uh, despise it, man. Yep. So this is Isaiah 64. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Gonna bring their fears upon them. You know, and I, man, I don't fear nobody. I don't fear nobody but God. Okay. Well, the Lord going to test their theory. And see, when you really fear the most high, you want to fear the vessels that he set up to show his judgment through. Exactly. So you, you would have been hearing, if you really feared the most high, you would have been hearing us. You would have been hearing the warnings that he was uh, giving his prophets, as he said, give them warning from me. You know, warn them, give them warning from me. Sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at us, it's like, ah, uh, they just some niggas just out there on the corner just talking shit. Yeah, doing um, mocking, uh, mockery on videos on, yeah. uh, on social media. Yeah. See, the Lord seek up in his fair point. It ain't talking about you afraid of snakes. It ain't no fear factor. Like, no, man, the Lord got something. The Lord know you, man. Inside out, he know you. So he gonna bring that fear upon you, man. Mm -hmm. Let me finish it. It said, I also would choose that delusion. It would bring that fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. Hmm. But they did evil before my eyes. Continually. And yeah. And chose that in which I delighted not. Yep. Because Jake chose, Jake thrived in wickedness, man. Look at Jake. Oh, look at all the sellouts, man. The Lord didn't credit you to be a, a degenerate, man. But these niggas became a degenerate plant. <laughs> you know, we were watching the uh, the G-Day, G uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. Mm -hmm. That's that's a fucking degenerate, man. Yeah. Real life events, <laughs> you know. The trailer got Eve ass on top of the car shaking her ass. It, it's too much, man. What you doing with the 2nd Ezra? I'm going to jump down. This 2nd is uh, 8. And uh, 56, it says, for when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High. And we know those that despise his word should be destroyed, as St. Paul verse 13 to 13. Because Jacob always say, only God can judgment, but we know, hey, the scripture says, you go feel the judgment right of God then, man. So you want to hear the prophets? You got it. Thou scorn of his law and forsook his ways. Right, forsook his way, you, you thought scorn of it. Why can't he no pork? The Lord made it, it, it's on earth, ain't it? <laughs> Go ahead. Moreover, right, they have trodden down his righteousness mm -hmm. and said in their heart, there is no power. There ain't no power. Why am I together? Why, 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 why am I in the hood then? Yeah, ain't no God, <laughs> you know? Why the babies be getting smoked, <laughs> you know? Yay, and that knowing they must die. So knowing, <laughs> knowing that they must die. Yup. So I ain't... It's good to say, don't pray for these people, man. And, and uh, so since they don't believe in the Most High while they're alive, I'm going to put it like this. In order to know the Most High, they're going to have to... See, it's just certain people, in order to know the Most High, they got to die. But... It's a no death by pain. But it's not just a... It's just not a normal type of death. Like, you ain't going to die... A nigga that disrespect the most high, they hear his word and don't keep his laws, or they come and, you know, they put their hand to the plow, and then they turn back and go into the world. You're not going to die a normal death, man. No, nah, it's going to be horrific. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be in, in, in the worst way. Yeah, like the um the dude testimony in uh, L.A. Yeah. He said, yeah, man, that was like five times. Come on, man. Day, man. They're like, yeah, that's judgment right That's there. judgment. Five power. Come on, man. Yeah. I'm like, boy, this. Five is power. <laughs> See, like what we was just reading, the, 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 they, they must know it. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Uh, because if, if, if you've been constantly warned and you know 
If the Lord is real, you being constantly warned. That that's even worse than someone who don't know the Most High. Be with men and strike. Cause you know the will of the Most High, and you still refuse to do it. Hey, that's that's almost like blasphemy, man. <laughs> so the Lord really gonna make an example out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, and said in their heart that there is no power. Yea, and that knowing. They must die. And Jake in the mind of Esau, but Esau don't believe in the most, huh? They God that they believe in Satan, no, they technology, they device. So he, the whole nation of Esau gotta be destroyed. That's it. If Jake got that mindset of Esau, they're gonna be destroyed right with him, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got it, bro. Oh, I'm gonna get this. This second Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times should come. Some difficult times. Jacob trouble. Right? So this is the word perilous in the online etymology dictionary, full of danger, risky, involving exposure to death. Exposure to death, man. <laughs> it said destruction or injury, also spiritually dangerous, man. Spiritually dangerous, man. Yeah. You know, you you playing with uh you playing with uh you playing with fire. <laughs> you know, you playing with fire, man. And when you play with fire, you, you get burned. So the Lord, he's, uh, his long suffering is going to come, you know, he's he's patient. He's long suffering, uh, not willing that any should perish. Yeah. But guess what? <laughs> this is uh, second there, was nine. And it's going to say exposure to death, man. So it's going to be mass death, man. Like, uh, 24, like uh, what happened in Japan? <laughs> that earthquake, man. Yup. Boy. Yup. You got it. Just kicking off 2024. This uh, second edition is 9 and 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case which have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Those, those the miseries, the calamities, man. For such as in their life have received benefits. And have not known me. Wait, right, look at uh, Eve. You got the section A. You got the, you know, got the power from Esau. Get yeah. the man at the house. And woo the woo. Even Jake, you know, making six figures. They receive their benefits, their consolation. They don't know the Lord, Yahweh yeah, Shemal Shah. Yep. The Lord said, let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he shall not learn righteousness. Now, I say the wicked, we know that's talking about Esau, Edom. But the... Uh, Mass majority of the Lord's people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you fall within that same category of the wicked, right? Because, hey, he's shown us more favor than any other nation on the planet because he chose us as his own special people unto himself. We say that we should show forth praises, that we should show forth the glory and the praise of your Shem and Yahweh Shah. Yeah. And the only way you're going to show that is by keeping his word. He said, you love me, keep my commandments. You know, a woman, uh, when she has a husband, the best thing that she can do to glorify that husband is be faithful unto him and keep his word and keep uh, and keep the principles of his household. You know, she got to she got to represent. That's it. She got to respect that man. So be submissive. Yeah. So Jake, you're not you're not doing that. Because the Lord likened us to a delicate coming woman. That's it. So we not being submissive to uh Yahweh Shemar Shah. What the Lord gonna throw us away? That's it. He gonna what? He gonna find a find a new woman. That's, that's it. it. That's uh, it. Uh, uh, you know? Because the scripture said, "What well, kiss the son unless he be angry with yep. you? Uh, what unless it's Ralph Kendall and you perish in the way? I don't gotta whoop a pale face. Yeah, you can grab. You can grab. This is Psalms two. This is Psalms 2 and, um, and 12. Let me start at 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Catch the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Bless are all they that put their trust in him, man. Yeah, and you kiss the son by keeping his ways. You know, by keeping his ways, by committing and submitting ourselves to his good will. Yep. You know, which is these laws, statutes, and commandments. It says, then shall they be in pitiful case which have now abused my ways 
and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. You ain't going to be kept. You ain't going to be under that uh, wing of protection from the Lord. The Lord going to leave your ass out here naked. Yeah, you're going to be walking naked. <laughs> and when you go into that word naked, it means helpless, man. You're going to be out here helpless in the time of Jacob's trouble. It says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty, and when, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it, the same must know it after dealt by pain, man. You know? So, I'm going to keep going. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Right, we really ain't, we really don't care how these ungodly people are going to perish. Because we know they're going to perish. I'm ain't concerned how the righteous going to be saved. It's going to be chariot, spiritual power. <laughs> you know? Yep. Ultimately through fear. Yeah. So all of it goes back to that fear. That's why we have to put that spirit of fear out there because the spirit of fear is the same spirit that's going to bring you salvation. Because now your mind is going to be geared towards getting in order. You know, doing the things that please the most high to the best of your ability. And doing it more and more abundantly. That's the scriptures say, always abounding in the work of the Lord, man. Because yeah. I skipped around, but you know, when you got to 2nd Edges 9 and 7, it says, uh, the ones that are going to be preserved are those that uh have faith and works, right? They're going to be preserved from the said perils from their faith in the works. Well, fear, right, is the first step, and it was created. With the faithful in the womb, man. Yeah, it was about Phil Noah was moved to move um uh, to build an ark through Phil. Man. <laughs> you know, fear acts of activates the faith, man. It says, uh, inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. Sure. So that remnant who the Lord is going to save out of Jacob's trouble, guess what they're going to inherit. The earth, we're going to be, see, we haven't been made as low as we're going to be made before. We're going to be made real low, man. You know, like, Jake, we ain't, we ain't catching the hell that uh, we got coming. Like, we ain't catching nowhere near the amount of hell that we really got coming, man. But that's, that's the process of the Lord. Like I say, he that is exalted shall be abased. All right? And he that is abased shall be exalted. So he's going to bring us very low in these times. Like, but we're going to survive through faith, man. We're going to survive through faith, man. Bro, you might not have a roof over your head, man. All right? If the elite's going to have to go and, and, and hide in the rocks, what makes you think, like, you're going to just be able to, you know, no, man, we're going to have to be like pilgrims on the earth, man. Okay? And a lot of Jakes uh, don't have the spirit uh, built up to move like that. Okay? This is what uh, these exhortations and these lessons is all about. Building our faith up to put all our trust in Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. Knowing that in the end, he's going to deliver us. We will get the victory through keeping the fear and faith in your heart by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Okay? With that, we're giving all praises on the Lord once again to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, by Shem Achakadash, Korm Yasharala, Baba Baal. Rise, Israel, destroy confusion. Shalom.